welcome to another episode of All Things Entrepreneur, where we shine the light on the blind side of entrepreneurship. My name is Errol J. Allen, your co-host, and I'm here today with my lovely co-host, Ms. Jessica Myers. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. How are you feeling? I'm feeling blessed and highly favored. Thank you for asking. But you know, not as good as our guest probably feels right about now. How are you feeling, Mr. Kyle? Yeah, you know, I'm feeling great, man. I'm so excited to be a part of this beautiful podcast, ATE, All Things Entrepreneur. We're here. Part of now, part of what Errol said, we're here to shine the light on the blind side of entrepreneurship. And one of the things that you don't see a lot of times is the work that happens behind the scenes, like especially when you start talking about laws and everything like that that gets passed. And actually you and I got to spend the day at the Capitol. That's right. Uh, about a week or two ago, where we, we saw the people that are behind the scenes that are fighting for things that we may not know about. And that's where we connected with Kyle mm -hmm. and what he's doing with the bookstore gallery that is right here in Atlanta and how your time communities and you're also doing a lot of the fighting behind the scenes that people may not see, but it very much comes in the light Full when the circle. impact yeah. and everything like that. So thank you for coming and joining us today, Mr. Kyle Brown. Yeah, I'm excited, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, yes. Can you can you explain a little bit now? I know you got some corporate, some entrepreneurship. Which one you like better? Man, I would have to go with the entrepreneurship because it is a sense of freedom. Mm. Right. Uh, being able to control your time, uh, control um, just the resources around you and just how you're able to take what you have and just, like you said, be impactful to your community. Because because your brick and mortar is called Bookstore Gallery. Correct. But what is the real impact behind what you do as an entrepreneur? Uh, so the real impact uh, Bookstore Gallery, first and foremost, we were I'm the founder and CEO. It's a family run operation. Uh, we wanted to make sure we had a seat at the table when it comes to being a black or brown individual wanting to get into the, the cannabis uh, space. Right. Um, we see a lot of uh, shops opening all throughout the city. We see CBD at gas stations, um, <laughs> Not this, gas stations. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like. <laughs> Absolutely not, right? Yeah, I you know, think about like, the Exxon. I'm like, <laughs> right? Are you getting sushi from the gas station? No, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so we really wanted to make sure we were a beacon when it comes to educating the people about um, the uses of CBD cannabis and other botanicals as well, because we don't just sell uh, cannabis. We sell kava, kratom. We have non psychoactive shrooms as well. Uh, these are all just other. Um, botanicals that you can use just for for wellness we yeah want everybody to be in a better state of mind whether it's mentally physically or psychologically we want to get everybody in a better place so let's let's take it back how did this even get how do you even get into a space because you're obviously a new york native right That's went right. to morehouse graduated from there how do we and emory and emory yeah. on oh, my apologies and emory right. too MBA for emory yeah, you know. go on with accolades off real quick. Just so so we got. Yeah, so I've got like you said, I did go to Morehouse College, graduated uh, 2013. My uh, house BA in uh, finance, mm -hmm. and then uh, here recently, well, 2020, I graduated with my master's in entrepreneurship and operations management from Emory University, Osweta School of Business. Okay, so how do we get into the space of the health and wellness? What was like the spark that made you say, I wanna go here now? So it actually was during um, my stint at Emory when I was getting my MBA, it was like 2019. Uh, like I said, that's when really CBD was like really emerging as like a really trending topic. And what does CBD stand for just for the non-CBD? So group? cannabinol diol is what it is, CBD, it's, um, it's part of it's the first cousin to marijuana essentially mm -hmm. they look alike they smell alike <laughs> they grow alike like you really can't determine the difference outside of actually testing the plant for its thc composition right but i think it's the slick way of getting the infrastructure in and then it's just going to flip over as it becomes legal but then our community sees cbd and is not getting in the infrastructure exactly so jessica you're a genius that's exactly what we're doing. We're literally laying the foundation or the ecosystem, if you will, for when things do become legal here in Georgia, because it will happen. You know, we see all these other states. They're just capitalizing on all the monetization of all these dispensaries and just the selling of cannabis alone. Um, so it, it will be coming down the pike here in Georgia. That's why we're advocating, making sure a smaller 
mom and pop shops don't just get ran over by all <laughs> these bigger, big pharma companies. That is setting up the infrastructure because exactly. even with us being in real estate, it's like just how you you know how you start to see them do it Pittsburgh, where you see them do some them they start doing the uh, the renovation of that Pullman Yards mm -hmm. and all those things, and we start to see it. We don't know the impact. So it's like we started to see it legalization in Cali and Denver and we talk about it in the songs and we laugh, but then it's like it's coming to you. And if you ain't ready and your house ain't in order, exactly. It's exactly. gonna be too late. So that's why there's a bookstore gallery near you, right? And we really want this to be a community center in all neighborhoods, right? It's it really the importance of a third space, right? It's a space for us as black and brown people. Um, a lot of other dispensaries, they want you in and out, right? They just looking for that transaction. Mm -hmm. We actually want to of course, have a transaction with you, but it's going to be more than just monetary based. We want to have a conversation with you. We want to educate you. We want you to come and decompress because, um, like I said, everyone is dealing with some type of stressor. Right? Yeah. And just being able to have an outlet that's positive. Um, and I'm at the age where I don't want to go to a club no more. I don't want to spend a thousand dollars for a section. I want to be able to come to a space that's playing some good vibes where I can meet other intellectuals such as yourself and um, we can talk about our businesses, talk about our podcast. Um, that's really what Bookstore Gallery it really embodies. It's a creative workspace. It's a creative community center. Um, and we do all these things very well. So what are some of the biggest obstacles you had to overcome to even get to the stage of having your physical bookstore gallery up and running now? Man, cannabis, man, we're, we're constantly under a microscope, right? Because the the, the climate is constantly changing with these bills. Like mm -hmm. you said, we're, we're constantly uh, lobbying at the Capitol. We're meeting our local reps, right? We're meeting, we're, we're meeting our council folks, state representatives. We want to make sure that they have our business in mind when we're talking about cannabis and smaller mom and pop shops opening business. Um, we want to make sure we do not get steamrolled and we don't get left out of just all the the profits yeah and just being able to invest in our our communities the right way um because like i said a lot of dispensaries they don't look at themselves as community centers they are just like literally there to make money mm -hmm. we're not there just to make money we're there to impact i'm literally in castleberry hills where i attended morehouse college i literally smoked my first joint <laughs> literally up the street so it really is a for a, a full circle moment and for me, it's about providing safe space, making sure these students or, of course, you got to be 21 years and older. So we do have upperclassmen that come through um, study and then they may indulge a little bit, but they know they have a safe space on their hands. They can come in, they can get good products. They know the products are tested. It's validated from a third party. We have our chart of analysis just tracking everything from seed to shelf. You'll be able to see that, hey, this has been grown in an organic uh, soil that's been tested for you know all type of metals and pesticides and plastics all of our flour we know comes from um, organic soil that has been tested and treated mm, that's beautiful and speaking of your location what does it mean to you being a graduate of morehouse and being able to have this you're on morris brown co campus right yeah so uh the bookstore gallery so the reason we kept bookstore in the name is because we used to be the a bookstore for Morris Brown and I think it was ITC College. Yeah. As well. mm -hmm. So it used to be their their official bookstore. Um, so, so how does that feel? Because I mean, you went from attending Morehouse to be like, I'm owning buildings on the AUC. Yes. Because you know that's a big deal. It's a big deal. And shout out to the Russells. Um, they were the inspiration, right? They provided us the opportunity to even get the land, get the space. So the Rice Center? Uh, absolutely. The okay. Rice Center. Um, like again, shout out to the Russells. It took a black um organization to believe in us and believe in our mission because it was a uh, i had about 12 no's before i had a yes so talking about you know some of the difficulty in getting into business a lot funding. of uh the funding right i spent especially money on this especially you in the bible belt south i mean i know you're from new york but uh right. you probably when you start hearing them no's you probably realize you in the bible belt south mm. yeah and then those were you know from all different folks right i've had some some opportunities in Buckhead. I was out in Chambly. We were literally looking all throughout Georgia for someone to give us a yes, to give us the chance to, like I said, create this modern day apothecary, create this community center. And a lot of them, they, they love the, the concept. They love the business model. But when it came down to it, like their mortgage companies were the ones that were like, hey, no, this is a risky business. Yep. They were the really ones, right. They were the ones just like, hey, we shouldn't allow this. You know, the infrastructure isn't there in Georgia yet. The legality isn't even there in Georgia yet. So 
it really wasn't the owners per se it was more of their mortgage companies that were just like hey if you guys are going to go with this business you need to refinance find a new mortgage company oh wow dang yeah so those were some of the some of the roadblocks that we faced early on and so just so i understand obviously the the building you have you own it right yeah so we're in the lease to own model you're in the uh, lease so to own model 10 years yeah so we've got to make sure we pay our rent on time for 10 years straight in order to be in the conversation and can you break down the the deal that the lease to own that you have with them like what does that mean yeah so we have a 10-year model um like i said we can't miss any rent payments so we need everybody's support right support this local black owned business um, we do do we do things exceptionally well. Um, we we focus on service and hospitality, mm -hmm. right? Even though we're in the, the cannabis business and it's you know mainly transactional, we really focus on the people. We focus on the product. Um, and like I said, a lot of black businesses get that wrong. They forget that hey, you're not. I'm not the boss. My customer is right. Mm -hmm. So I have to do everything in my power to make sure they have a wonderful experience. And not only do they come back, but they refer others. That's that's just the best marketing is yeah. coming from a human. the word of mouth the word of mouth yeah and you're in a similar space to me because i'm in the hospitality space the customer obviously if the customers do not have a pleasant experience they ain't coming back for round two okay. so what are some th some things that you're doing to drive like getting the name out there brand awareness like you know making sure that this is going to be a sticking point in the community literally what i'm doing right now ah casting with you all man I really appreciate you all for creating this platform <laughs> For us other entrepreneurs trying to get or think outside of the box when it comes to marketing right i'm in cannabis i can't run ads about the mm -hmm. stuff that I so yeah because i will say facebook might shut you down uh, it's already been happened it's already happened right i cannot uh, run ads right it's a substance right and, uh, i would say well i would think the first thing i would think is getting creative with the effect or the impact after when it comes to marketing, like you said, marketing is something that you can't really talk about because trust me, I, being a hedge fund manager, you know, I, it was a lot of things that I can and cannot say. Right. So it's like I had to get real creative with, you know, how you discuss things and how you talk about things. And I, I think that space, just like they're using CBD as a gateway to head into like, OK, well, we can't say the N word, right. but we can put down these these letters. And then that gives us the business infrastructure so that we can already be ready. Exactly. But what are some of the transferable skills that you think that you learned from corporate? Um, you know, even even if it is maybe, you know, some marketing or something like that, because you spent like nine years in corporate yeah. doing some heavy analytics, global oh. financial, you know, stuff. Speak more about your background and what transferable skills that you now use in your business. Absolutely. So the the power of KPIs, right? Key. Um key indicators or metrics that you have to go over with your team on a monthly basis. You need to know at any day of the week how you're performing, right? So definitely having that corporate background and understanding what my key process indicators are or what my metrics are, like how we're doing financially, how are we doing in terms of our inventory, how are we doing as far as our customer feedback, right? All these things we have to take in, into consideration in doing our business and making sure we're, we're doing it the right way and we're providing the people what they want. And of course, we're able to cover our bills, right? We're able to pay ourselves and pay our, our lease on time, right? Because that 10 years, we want to make sure we're in position to purchase our building outright. So what is your team comprised of right now for the, the gallery, the bookstore gallery? So like I said, it's a family-run operation. Uh, my aunt, um, Auntie Chai, uh, she is a master gardener. Um, she's got over 40 years of experience when it comes to nonprofit work. She's... Uh, um, led a lot of um, endowments out in California when it comes to mm -hmm. advocacy for HIV work um, as women's um, empowerment. She's done so many things. She actually started the first, I want to get this right, LBGTQ organization on Howard's campus back in the 80s. Oh, wow. Uh, so, she's, so you got leadership in your blood. Oh, yeah. It's in our blood. And like I said, the power of a third space, right? Having a space where folks of color can come to and be safe can discuss their ideas. There's no judgment there. Um, that's that's always been in our DNA. Yeah. Um, so I've got Auntie. I've got my boy Malcolm. I met him freshman year at Morehouse College. Um, literally, it was always our dream to come together and open a dispensary ever since then, since we started smoking. Um, so here we are together. Uh, and another good friend of mine, Tokyo Trends. I met him when I was managing artists in a past life. Um, he's a big time <laughs> DJ. Past life? Past life. Yes. yes. <laughs> right. So like literally 2019, I was uh, 
brought in to help manage a few artists um, under the Milk and Cookies brand and Ravi uh, was the label back then. Okay, awesome, awesome. What do you think? Because, I mean, I, I know we probably don't, like, have... I want to make sure I don't get you in trouble. You don't have like, oh, this can fix this or this can cure that. But obviously, there's... Yeah, been... No, he does. It's just the same cure for all things. <laughs> you be like, so, wait, what do I need to fix? This? So when your customers or, when your good. customers come in, what are some <laughs> benefits, some health, you know, mm -hmm. health wins that have happened with customers using your products? Well, first of all, that's the most fulfilling thing is seeing a customer come back and say, hey, yo, this really helped. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always tell every customer, you know, associate it, go talk to your doctor, right? Let them know that, hey, you're looking to start to indulge in CPD. Because a lot of folks who come in my shop, they're already on other things, right? They're mm -hmm. on blood thinners or whatever, right? So you always want to make sure that, you know, you go talk to your doctor, you know, have that consultation, let them know. And I guarantee your doctor is going to be like, okay, and this is the adjustments we're going to make. And you can go ahead and use that CBD product, right? Because uh, we never want to give you something that's going to counteract if you're already on prescription medications. Um, but outside of that, um, it's all natural, right? This is something that transcends all cultures. You know, it doesn't matter if you're male or, or male or female. You can use this if you're getting the right dosage, right? So that's where we come in, making sure people learn about how to microdose, right? So if you're doing edibles, you want to microdose to figure out what's the right milligram usage that's best for your body, best for your um, for you to get out here and be productive in the world. Exactly. <laughs> key, it, key emphasis on productive because I think that has been the misnomer mm -hmm. is that it can put you in a state of sleep and rela rest and relax. And there are certain strands that do that. Absolutely. But there are more strands that are actually created for to peak creativity. Man, Mother Nature has created a strand for every illness or everything that you can possibly need. If you need sleep, there's a strand for that. If you need to be awake, there's a strand for that. If you need something for inflammation or pain management, there's a strand for that. that Mother Nature just always provides us what we need. Um, that's why, um, just circling back to the corporate thing. Um, so one thing I learned a lot about corporate was about the structure, right? But one thing that as a as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, I don't want to get into the capitalistic viewpoint, right? Because that's not how I'm naturally wired. I'm naturally wired that everyone should eat, right? Let's let's barter, right? You if you, if you have this, you've got that. We can kind of barter to make sure we both can get a mutual beneficial um, experience out of creating it. a win win ethos. Creating a win win ethos and understand that money is not the only currency. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, I needed to pay bills and things like that, but I'm truly living in the faith. And I know that when you're doing right, right will come, mm. you know, so that's really the only difference uh, from being in corporate and to owning my own is that I don't want to get caught up in a capitalistic. Oh, somebody but, has to lose in order for somebody right, to win. I have to, you know, I have to exploit somebody mm. you know, till it's no more. That's that's just not the black way. We are a communal people and we can really pool our resources, whether you have cash or you may not have the cash, but you might have a following on Instagram that you can leverage to get some freebies in the shop. Or you might have, I don't know, it's just so many other things that we have that we have to make sure we understand the value of it than just saying, hey, money is the end all be all. So obviously you said you have a 10 year lease to own segment mm -hmm. with this, right? Uh, what is your vision? What do you want the store, the brand to be before that 10 years is up? When it gets to that stage, at least. Um, so the bookstore gallery is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than, you know, I want it to stand the test of time. I want it to be here for generations to come. I want, you know, we're right by the AUC Center, right? We have a lot of emerging leaders coming up behind us. And we want to make sure we have a a business that, that's equitable. It's it's giving them the ability to expand. And like I said, I, I really feel we're building a multi-million dollar, if not billion dollar brand right now. Um, and like I said, it, it's going to stand the test of time by making sure we, we, we know who our politics are, our politicians are. We're constantly at the table. We're constantly going to the Capitol, letting them know that, you know, we're, we're creating a space that's for all type of people. It's, I have doctors, lawyers. I've got teachers. You know, they need it. For sure, yeah. dealing with, you know, <laughs> the younger folks, man. But just making sure that we're tearing down that stigma that, you know, people who use cannabis uh, it really transcends all age groups, all generations, all all type of, you know, religious backgrounds and all of that stuff. 
Maybe the, sneaking. the power of the plant brings everybody <laughs> together. It really yeah. does. And yeah. that's why they really, you know, they outlawed it back in the day because they saw it was bringing black and white yeah. folks together, right? Listening to jazz. You know, that's when they saw them, you know, white folks starting to mingle with us because of the power of the plant and seeing just uh, just all the magic that happens yeah. when you're on the plant and you can get bring people together and seeing things from a different lens is really a huge, huge impact um, that we're hoping to get back to. Okay. In terms of the business side, are there like any licenses or um, barriers that have to be met or obtained, broken in order for you to even get the bookstore going off the ground? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we actually do help consult other folks who are looking to get into the space. Oh, that's excellent. Into the, into the business side or just? Absolutely. Okay. Into the business side. Um, so um, just long story short, a high level. Uh, so you do need your sales license, right? Just to be able to sell anything. Right. So How do you get a sales right. license? So you would get your sales license through the Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. right? Because we're we're selling a substance that comes from the ground, right? Mm -hmm. So it's only right that we're uh, essentially licensed, licensed, and we're also they come in and do inspections. So just like if you have a restaurant, you know, the food, uh, was it the food and beverage, you know, whatever that organization is, they FDA? would come in. They uh, health and safety, right? Okay. Health and safety. They'll come in and they'll check and make sure your kitchen is up to par and things like that. Um, so we same thing. Um, we basically have Department of Agriculture. They'll come in and they can grab anything off our shelves, and we got to make sure it has been tested. You have to make sure you know it's been third party tested, and it comes in at the the legal limit within Georgia, right? So we're coming in at the recreational. What's limit. the legal limit? So it's point zero three percent all the way up to point zero six percent right now. Yeah. And Georgia is a medical state, so you can get your medical marijuana license. Um, and there are medical dispensaries here in Georgia. We're a recreational dispensary, but there are rec there are medical um, dispensaries that are in Cobb County right now in Marietta, um, where if you show your medical marijuana license, you will be able to get medical prescribed uh, THC oil. Mm. Mm. So that, look at them being slick. It's like they slick and inching, easing. Yeah. So how do you feel about that with the industry? Like seeing, like you said, how they're getting their infrastructure set up. The big wigs are starting to build. And then you see a lot of the mom and pop shops that are, are a lot of times we can wait till too late. Like if we wait till they say go to get our engines ready and set up, like it's very important almost like to be set up now. Absolutely. There's literally farms being built south of the city right now that no one knows about, but they're literally getting these fields ready for the big operations of marijuana being legal here in Georgia. Because the second they say go, they're going to be ready to go and, so, and people are going to be starting to get ready as they get say go. Exactly. They're already they're ready, ready. Yeah. Honestly, if you know our governor, uh, Kemp, you know, he has an agriculture background. Mm. And like you say, you know our governor. I mean, you you had a chance to meet him last week. Uh, yeah, well, I saw. Him. I didn't get to personally meet him. I hopefully will meet him on the twenty first of okay. this month. I know okay. they're doing a cannabis day, okay, uh, marijuana day. So hopefully I'll get to meet him then. Um, I have met our mayor, um, brother Dick uh, Andre Andre Dickens. Um, he's a huge uh, supporter and advocate of the bookstore gallery. Mm -hmm. um, he sent our blessings for our grand opening last year. The, um, Invest Atlanta was there. Okay, our local council folks. Um, Councilman Dozier and um, Byron Allen was there as well. Oh, wow. Oh, well, it's, you should have led with that. Yeah. <laughs> but, so, so one of the things that I'm looking at right now is a magazine. This is um, a magazine that your bookstore publishes. Yes, every quarter. So that's our first issue, um, the Bookstore Gallery Magazine. So it's really talking about how we're cultivating our culture. Uh, we're cultivating um, just creativity amongst everyone in our community. Mm -hmm. um, and just talking about what Bookstore Gallery is all about. Okay, because because you do feature some other entrepreneurs in here as well. I do indeed. Like other growers in the community. Absolutely. Growers. Uh, we also sell art in our, so that's a gallery piece, right? So, yeah, we, we're doing a lot of things, right? We're selling, we like to say CBD or hemp or cannabis gets folks in our doors, right? But once they get in our doors, they realize just we're just so much more than just a dispensary. Oh, it's a movement. Like, so, you have a lot, a lot of um, excitement. It's very colorful. Yeah. Like you mentioned, it's definitely an art, a work of art. Yeah, so we're in... The west side of Atlanta, right? So Castleberry is the art district of Atlanta. So yeah. it's only right that we we show homage to all the artists. the artists in the area, right? So all the art in our space, I would say 90% of it is actually done by local artists in Castleberry. Oh, wow. Um, so all the art is for sale. So we sell art, 
you know, in our space as well as all these botanicals. Uh, we are an event space, and if you are looking for a space just to come and work, um, we do provide Wi-Fi, so you can literally come in as if you were going to a Starbucks. But if you like cannabis and edibles and teas, we've got that for you. Mm. I, how many people can the space hold? I was like, this sounds like a good venue space. Y'all look oh, for venue exactly. space. Exactly. So we do a lot of events. We do birthday parties. We've done anniversaries. We've done an MTV Unplugged. We've done Love and Hip Hop. Mm. We've done all different type of um, you know productions. Um, but like I said, we in truly are a, a community center. You know, I'm not looking to gouge people on pricing. This should be available for everybody. Yeah. So, so give me um, two or three customers that the biggest customers that you have walked through your doors and you was like, you really? <laughs> hopefully we ain't, hopefully we ain't bashing on, you know, shine. I, I was like, maybe they don't. Know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I would say, um, Lisa Ray, uh, she's definitely been a, a huge supporter. Uh, I'm just being across the street. I'm right across the street from Atlanta, Tucky, right? So that's owned by the Nappy Roots. Uh, so they're literally in our shop like every other day. And I'm over there every other day as well because I love their beers. Um, so they're Scales and Skinny. They're band members of the Nappy Roots. They're in our space all the time. Um, I've had um, Manny Fresh. Manny Fresh has come through. He's graced us. Uh, two weeks ago, we had the Young Bloods. They came through and blessed the space, and they actually did a performance at Atlanta, Tucky, that later that evening. Yeah. Um, do you do a uh, podcast out of there by chance? Not yet, but I would love to invite you all to come through yeah. um, just to shoot ATE there, and you know, just to get some more exposure, get some more folks on on the podcast. Yeah, because it seems yeah. like with you having so many guests come in, it's like that would be dope. Yeah, yeah I mean. Love to have you guys come through and shoot your guys as a podcast at our space. Um, and as, and we're looking to open our second location uh, this spring. Uh, it's going to be 488 Edgewood, right beside Slutty Vegan, mm. uh, right around the corner from the Martin Luther King uh, Center and um, Ebenezer Church, all that the Auburn area. Um, so we're, we're in another historic district here in Atlanta uh, serving our people. What would you say? Because early on, like I'm talking like young preteen years was this something that was always of uh, interest or focus or was you looking in a completely different direction earlier in your younger years of life uh, younger years of life this definitely um my mom worked at rikers island so this was a no-go she was not going i was straight lace and i was an athlete so i didn't really start utilizing the leaf literally until college uh, so i had no idea i would be into this space i did know that early on that I did want to uh, own real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, real estate has always been a passion of mine. I literally watched my grandfather buy, you know, um, brownstones in Brooklyn. And I remember in the first of the month with granddad, like, oh, you get all these women giving you, you know, checks and cash and bottles of wine. So like, I was, you? Right, I'm like, whatever granddad's doing, I want to do that. So I already knew I wanted to be in real estate and I knew I wanted to provide uh, just just wellness to the people. I want to provide either a safe space because I, I also do own real estate. I do have homes, um, residential homes that I, I lease out to folks. Um, so I always knew I wanted to have some type of real estate that's providing to the community some way, somehow. Mm, and that's beautiful that it's shaping up, like especially with you being in the legacy of the house. And then, like you said, having these shops in the footsteps of some of your same brothers. Yeah, it's just, it's a dream. Literally, I love going to work every day. I couldn't say that when I was in my corporate days. I literally would be in the parking lot just taking deep breaths. Like, man, I got to just get through today. What I mean, You don't have to say the company, but what was your, because yeah, it was an interesting title. I was like, how do you even become that? Yeah, so I started off in finance. So like I said, my undergraduate was in finance. So I worked in finance and accounting uh, early on in my career. Then I transitioned those skill sets into pricing. So I helped this multi-billion dollar corporation get their pricing right for their number of products, right? And mm. then I spent a number of years in pricing. Then my last role, I transitioned into a global procurement manager. Uh, so I literally managed about $80, $80 million in spend globally for this organization. And um, and you were like, not another day, not another hour. I'm going back to school. I'm going to change my position. I'm going to get into entrepreneurship. All that. But I mean, I wouldn't trade in my corporate days for anything because it really prepped me for this position I'm in now. 
Um, so I definitely couldn't have done this without my corporate experience and understanding how a multi-billion dollar business is ran, how to facilitate relationships with different vendors, how to also build up your vendors, right? Because a lot of times you grow into economy of scales and your vendors are not ready for that. So you literally have to make sure you're investing in them. You're having those open conversations to make sure they're able to grow with your business and set them up for success. That's the big yeah. thing. You got to set people up for success. You know, if you, if you don't, success. then you're doing yourself a disservice in them as well. And in a matter of time, you know, it's going to catch up with you. You don't want to skip steps in this this roadmap. Right. A lot of people jump into the entrepreneurship journey, not understanding that there's a lot of there's a series of steps that you have to take before you just jump in or willy nilly or it will it will bite you in the long run. I promise. Mm. So what are some actually I'm not going to say some. What is two products, one that is like a bestseller right now in your store that, you know, you're like, wow, I didn't think this is going to be it versus when you start off that you thought was going to be the bestseller. What? give me two products. Um, so one that, that shocked me was probably the herbal teas because um, our teas are infused with hemp, right? I got a lot of coffee drinkers, right? But every day we're literally converting coffee drinkers into tea drinkers. Um, I didn't, I just didn't expect it. I know it's really good. My aunt puts her love and soul into it, right? But like I said, a lot of people, I mean, of other, I would say races, right? The, the Asian culture, they really indulge in teas. But us, us as black people, don't necessarily, tea may not be high on our list of things to drink. Uh, so just being able to, to educate people, combat it, give them good flavors. We have teas that do have caffeine. So if you are a coffee drinker, and you're trying to figure out how do I get something else as an option that's going to give it's going to give me energy. Um, we do have teas for that. And if you are a person that's using melatonin, we have a tea for you that can help you get that good sleep. And I won't have you groggy in the morning or, or things like that. So literally just studying these different spices and pairing it with the right CPD strand to make sure you're getting that, that benefit. Uh, so that was a shocker for me to tease. Um, but everything else is your typical. Of course, flour is, is a top seller. Of course, our edibles do really, really well. And uh, like I said, uh, so our pastries, we have the brownies, Rice Krispie treats, cookies, all that. And then, of course, our gummies. All <laughs> of day, course. every day. Gummies <laughs> are. Yeah, because that's. I think that's the easy, the gateway. The the If you're not used to it, that's the way to ease right on in. Ease on into it, yeah. Wow. So let's take it back to your college days. The first time you hit the leaf. Yes, first time. When you Have you, you ever hit it? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. She literally like you. Because I, I he, he's very much disciplined and yeah. you know, not no vices. Discipline so. doesn't mean boring though. So, well, I, I'm not saying boring. I'm just saying you you abstain. Abstain, okay. But that's why this is so important to have this conversation because people are using this of all of all different professions. Mm -hmm. Right. Even though you think they're straight lace and stuff, but like they're at home blazing up. Mm -hmm. You need it. I know I need it. It helps with my temperament. It helps me with just just my mood in general. I know right. there'll be times where, because we have strategy meetings on Sundays, mm -hmm. and I call Jessica, up, and she be sounding way happier than <laughs> usual. I'm like, yeah. She's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, did I call it a bad time? She's like, no, you're right on time. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, the leaf. <laughs> you you <laughs> right on time. Like you said, there are some creative strands mm -hmm. that help you produce. And, you know, yeah. I like to indulge. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yes, yeah, so taking it back to the first time you hit the leaf in college, mm -hmm. was that something that sparked the interest of, I want to look at this in more of a business capacity, or was it just, I'm, um, you know, hitting it just to relax, relieve? Yeah, and... so for me, my first time hitting it was literally going into finals week. So I was, that's time to hit it. Right? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like everybody is. You ate some glass. You ate some glass. I did. I did graduate. Three point five overall. Uh -oh, yeah, uh -oh. you know what I'm saying. Uh, summa cum, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, but I felt like a huge hypocrite when I first hit it, and I just saw the, the power of it and just how it made me feel. Because in high school, like I said, I was an athlete, so I had teammates that were using it, and you know. If they got hurt or anything would happen, I always, that's the go-to, right? If you wasn't smoking that reefer, smoking <laughs> that weed, that wouldn't have happened, right? Um, but like I said, I felt like the, the biggest hypocrite because once I was able to indulge in it in, in college, I just was like, man, this is, where has this been? This now you need to host anxiety, the pep rally. <laughs> right, all my anxiety was able, I get extremely clammy when I get nervous or getting, you know, get a lot of anxiousness, right? So 
it just helps me just to be able to handle my nerves mm -hmm. like my nerves get real real bad mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. this person this kyle you see today all calm cool and collective i really it took work to yes the work is is this post leaf kyle we talking to right now or is i'm this... always on it ah. it's, it's not even you can't like i said i keep it in my bloodstream like cbd is something that you want to keep in your bloodstream because we all have an endocannabinoid system mm -hmm. everybody can you explain that endocannabinoid system so that's literally how your nerves talk to one another okay that's that system. It literally sounds, I mean, well, I don't want to get too technical, but are you familiar with the Netflix documentary, The Mycelium Network? And it talks about, literally, you talk about uh, fungi mm -hmm. or the shrooms that you have. Yep. But literally, they have a whole network underneath the ground, and that's how they talk to each other. Literally. Through shrooms. And so when you ingest them or put them in your system, you now give your body the same conversation that nature is having. Literally. By putting literally. it in your stream. Literally. Thank you, That's amazing. Yes. Well, thank you so much. I mean, this has been a fun conversation. I mean, I don't know if you got any contact or if you feel a little. Uh, easier I, 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 now. I feel. I feel a second degree coming on. <laughs> feel a little easier from the conversation. You know, I, I alleviated it from this morning. I'm never. I was never against it. I'm just. I'm, I'm cool. Well, I meant. I meant relax from the. Conversation. Oh, gosh, 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 gosh. It's what I was trying to say. Okay. Relax. Yeah, man. I got to bring you some treats, man. Because it's, it's not just about smoking. Mm -hmm. We have bath bombs. You can literally soak in it. Right, mm. your skin has all these receptors and resorb. Like you can literally absorb it through your skin, mm. and just be like rejuvenated. I'm open-minded. So, how can people find you to stay in touch? Yeah, so we're on all social media platforms. Essentially, we're Bookstore Gallery underscore ATL on IG and, and Facebook. Um, on was it X or Twitter? Yeah, Twitter is Books. formerly known as Twitter X. Yeah, it's for X. Uh, we're Bookstore G on on Twitter or X. Um, on LinkedIn with Bookstore Gallery. Um, our website is bookstoregallery.com. You can come in. You can reserve our space for, like I said, any private event. Mm -hmm. we, we do private events all day long. Mm -hmm. um, and then on our daily basis, we do uh, print out our calendar every month on our IG and social channels. Um, just so you can see some of the therapy sessions. Oh, yeah, because I need to come and make the space. Oh, yeah, you got to play the space. Then. We have game nights on Mondays. We do live jazz on, like, the third Wednesday of every month. We do men's mental health meetups on the first and third Tuesday of every month. Oh, that's Hosted cool. by Good. Dougal. Uh, we can't forget about our sisters, right? So we do happy hour healing with Dr. Ammonia, Dr. Uh, Ike. They're both clinical psychologists. Um, so that's the first and third Thursday of every month. We have the women's meet up or happy hour healing. And then in between that, we do dance parties. We've got the hot and fun. That's our dance party, um, hosted by DJ Tokyo trends. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's like the precursor to trap sushi. So it's like another cosplay dance party. Right. So we're like, we're moving away from just going to the club and just, yeah. sex. we want to have fun with it. We want to yeah. get back to our, our youth. Right. So let's dress up. Let's. Like I said, it's a no judgment zone. We want you to come as you are um, and just have a good, clean fun. Yeah. You know? I definitely see that's more of a chill vibe that everybody's looking for. Yeah. We tried to throw a party like we did. I used to throw huge New Year's Eve parties. We tried to this year. Our, our friend group was like, uh, we chilling. Like, it, we, <laughs> we, it, 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 that would have been a better vibe than go out and get all you can drink. Yeah, because we get older now. Yeah. Waking up after drinking is just like, yeah. oh. I was like, all you can drink is one drink. All you can drink is one drink. How you feel? Any 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 last words or final words you want to leave us with, Errol? I'm about to pop on the bookstore. Okay. Please, man, I owe you a shirt, brother. I'll get you. I get appreciate you it. Yes, yes, yes. As you can see, we got the fit on now, go. the bookstore gallery. Jessica represent. <laughs> and you go to your website as well as yeah. your Instagram to stay in touch and to get all of your things together. So thank you guys for tuning into another episode of All Things Entrepreneur. I've been your co-host Jessica Myers as co-host Errol J. Allen and be sure to join us and subscribe for more information and to tune into better different episodes you know you got it let's get it let's, let's go, go.